An estimated 100 people showed up today for a rally in support of the Waiehu Municipal Golf Course. The mayor had proposed its closure during his State of the County address last month. That's a course that I grew up on and like where I share memories with my fellow teammates. You know, I think everyone had realized, especially going to the MIL uh, playoffs over the weekend, that the, everyone got their start from the Waiehu Golf Course. It has become a place a place where we share with our families, where these kids behind us have actually grew up on the golf course. I started on that course, so it means a lot. Um, it's kind of like where I grew up, so nothing can't re can replace where I first started out. It's like, it's really good because it's affordable and it's kind of where we grew up on so we know the course but each day it's a different challenge. Um, we're put in di different situations where we're not necessarily put in every day and the coach is there and the people there, you know, they're so friendly and nice and you don't get that anywhere else. I was shocked and surprised but I understand there's other things they want to do with the golf course. I really think that the golf course is a great asset to the community. There's no other course that is inexpensive where some of the people can play. First of all, I think it's a travesty that they'd even consider selling this ground or doing something else with it. Uh, this is the last parcel on the island that is of that size and in that kind of location next to the ocean. It's highly desirable and I can see where developers would love to have this uh, since it's the last piece of ground that's around. And uh, we feel that uh, because we've been playing it and playing with a lot of locals, which we enjoy meeting all the people that go out there, uh, you know, there's, there's a great number of people that use this every day. And it, as a recreation facility, I think it's second to none on the island. In explaining the closure, the mayor stated that the course was operating at close to a $3 million a year loss annually and close to a $16.3 million loss over the last 10 years. I think they said they lost $3 million last year and I mean, I'd, I haven't looked at the books, but I do think that it's almost hard to spend that much money, let alone with, with no income, you know? So maybe you gotta look into where some of that money's going if there's some waste in the parks department or anywhere else. The, court, the golf course generates some money, but not enough to break even. I don't think it'll come at that point. I think, you know, we, we really want the golf course to be a little more self-sufficient. We need to change some of our rules. You know, booking two days in advance, you know, that's 30 years ago. We want to book 30 days in advance, book online, you know, take charge cards. That's some of the issues that we can fix very shortly if we were to do that. Well, it's, it's nice that it's affordable. I think they could charge a little bit more for the actual golf. Um, they charge right now a lot for the, the carts, but the golf itself is pretty much, you know, I think it's five dollars or something for a, a resident. I also think they could start opening it, making it a little bit more open to non-residents. Right now it's really hard to make a tea time there. You only can make one two days out. So if they were just to change their reservation uh, system, and they could, so these guys that are coming from the mainland, because you know, it's one of the only courses you can play that it's right on the ocean, and that's you know, somewhat affordable, you know? Maybe they could raise the rate, and we don't have any argument with that. I think you could raise the rate you know, quite a bit, and maybe cover the loss that they claim to have. I'd like to see the papers on that loss, frankly, but there has been nothing revealed about it. As chair of the Parks Committee and father of an active junior golfer, Councilmember Don Guzman said that he stands in full support of the course remaining open. It's, it's really been uh, quite an experience to make sure that your kid has a, a place to play and, and roam while also sharing that love for the game, which basically uh, YA who has provided for us for 87 years, the first golf course in the territory of Hawaii. Uh, most people don't realize that golf courses are preservation of open spaces. It is a preservation of family values. It is a preservation of our culture. For junior golf in Maui, Waihu is definitely like the main course. It's not only the one of the only courses where you can walk, you know, where a lot of these junior golfers, they don't have their driver's license or they don't want to pay for these carts, they don't have the money, but it's also the only really affordable option. So if you're a junior golfer, chances are you're spending most of your time playing at Waihu. I think the most important thing you'll see you see a lot of kids here today and these are the future kids in our community 
and they'll be adults and they'll be one day have their own families. We want to keep the golf course and we want to make sure that the kids have activities uh, where they can get a free education. Golf, there is a lot of juniors that went to Waihu that got four-year scholarships. And that's a lot of money for the average working family. The rally preceded the council's public hearing on the county's fiscal year 2018 budget. For Maui Now in Wailuku, I'm Wendy Osher.